Well, NASA astronomers have discovered seven planets with Earth-like characteristics. The planets were found orbiting a single star 40 light years away. Now, Clyde Foster from the Astronomical Society of Southern Africa joins us now to explain this discovery, because for most of us, explanation is needed. Thank you so much for joining us, Clyde. Now, this news went viral since it was revealed in a live broadcast in, um, um, from NASA with the added detail that three out of those seven planets um, are reported to have the potential to support liquid water on the surface. Now, how significant is that particular part of this development? Absolutely. There's obviously a lot of excitement as to whether life can exist elsewhere in the in the universe. And what's exciting, particularly about this um, this um, communication, is that um, we're sitting with seven planets around the star system, which is relatively, in the big picture of things, close to quite close to Earth. But um, six of them uh, appear to be rocky. Uh, now, in our own solar system, we've got four rocky planets, one of which have, is Earth, and then the four giant um, gas planets. So the potential of Earth-like planets in the system is, is quite high. Um, amazingly, all of them are relatively similar in size to the, the Earth, and as you've highlighted, three of them lie in the what we call the habitable zone, where potentially we can have liquid water on the surface, but obviously there's other factors related to atmospheres that have to be taken into account. Now, um, space exploration and research like this has been going on for generations. How is it possible that a finding this large, a large grouping of planets of this size and significance has only just been discovered? Well, there's new instrumentation that has been brought in um, relatively recently and th this discovery is a combination of a number of um, instruments and telescopes, um, not um, least of all the, um, the ESO Very Large Telescope. Uh, we've got one of the space telescopes which specifically um, looks at infrared area of the spectrum um, and that was put into orbit in 2003, not the Hubble, this was a different telescope. And these have all been gathering data over the last, um, as I say, since about 2003 and being analysed by NASA and now the results are starting to, to come out. So now what's next in this process? This discovery has been made public in your experience. What's next for NASA on, in this project? A lot of excitement as to further research on these, um, on these planets. Um, Hubble Space Telescope has already been allocated time. The next step would be to look at the atmospheres of these planets. We, we know very little about them. Um, the fact that they are in the habitable zone is obviously very exciting, but um, for life to exist, or some form of life form to exist, um, it's not only a case of having water on the planet. Uh, you have to look at um, temperature conditions, uh, not only just the absolute temperature, but obviously the temperature range. Do you have extremes? Uh, you've got the atmospheric pressure, and obviously you've got uh, the atmospheric gas composition. So are you saying that we don't know at this stage whether or not there is another form of life on those particular planets? Exactly. That is, uh, that is the exciting part for, for future uh, results to come out. And then just finally, in your circles, is there a hope that this latest development will encourage more interest and indeed more investment um, in astronomical research and exploration? It would be great. Uh, it's um, in interesting times at, uh, at, at NASA. Um, we're involved in a number of projects um, with them. Obviously, politically, there's, uh, there's changes taking place in the States, which um, I think is bringing its own challenges. Um, but the, this, this type of research and these results, um, specifically, um, I think are, are tremendous encouragement for the scientists to, to keep pushing forwards. And of course, we're all aware of the, the developments on, on, on Mars. And, and that ties in very much with the whole issue of habitable planets, conditions on planets, and just um, what form of, uh, of life or organic matter can survive under these conditions. Well, how absolutely fascinating. Thank you for joining us, Clyde Foster there, um, from the Astronomical Society of Southern Africa. Well